Circular motion is a crucial part of the specification and I've created lots of problems to help you get the best score possible. Question 1. A body takes 13.4 seconds to complete 10 rotations. Find the frequency. So we just need to watch out that the actual time period will be 13.4 divided by 10, meaning that the frequency, which is equal to 1 over the time period, is going to be 1 over 1.34 giving us around 0.746 hertz. Question 2. Find the angular velocity of the object. To solve this one we could either use omega is equal to 2 pi f or omega is equal to 2 pi divided by the time period. The two approaches are completely equivalent so let's just use this one 2 pi divided by the time period which was 1.34 and this here is going to give me around 4.6 nine seconds to a power of minus one. Moving on to question three. Find the linear velocity in question one if the radius of rotation is 1.7 meters. Okay, now remember linear velocity is given by the total distance, which is the circumference of the circle divided by the time. This here 2 pi over t is actually the angular velocity, so we can also rewrite this equation as omega r. This is where it actually comes from. But also we found out omega in the previous part of the question, so we can just say that this will be 2 pi over 1.34 multiplied by the radius, which is 1.7 and this here will give me around 7.97 meters per second or about eight up to two significant figures. Question four. A day on the surface of Jupiter takes nine hours and 56 minutes. Find the angular speed on a point on the surface. Okay so the angular speed is just equal to the angular displacement divided by the time. Now a full rotation is 2 pi radians so this here will be 2 pi divided by the time period which which is 9 hours and 56 minutes that we'll need to convert to seconds. So this here will be 9 times 60 plus an additional 56 minutes and then each of them are going to have 60 seconds. And this here will just give me, let's see, 1.76 times 10 to the power of minus 4 radians per second which we tend to write as s to the power of minus 1. Question 5. Which one of these statements is incorrect? A. The speed of the object is constant. This one here is definitely correct. It's the velocity that's changing because velocity is a vector quantity and the direction is changing in circular motion. B. The resultant force is towards the center. Once again this is correct. One of the main aspects of circular motion. C. The resultant force must be along the tangent of the circle. This is a very common misconception and this here is incorrect. Let's also discuss D. There is no work done by the centripetal force. This one here is also correct. Remember, work done is equal to fx cos theta and the angle between the displacement and the force is actually 90 degrees because they are going to be perpendicular. Cos of 90 is just zero, which means that the work done is zero, and this one here is correct. One of the keys to success in A-level physics is testing your skills on questions that you've never seen before. And finding those is hard, which is precisely why I've started my very own workbooks. Over the last few months, I've created pages and pages of circular motion problems, and you can buy my workbook using the link in the description. It will give you some invaluable practice. Question six, we perform an experiment Varying the radius of rotation of a bung moving in a horizontal circle, we plot a graph of its speed against the radius. What quantity will the gradient represent? Well, we know that v is equal to omega, the angular velocity, multiplied by the radius. If v is on the y-axis, if r is on the x-axis, what we're going to have is a graph which is a straight line through the origin and our gradient is omega. Now m is omega which is also equal to 2 pi times the frequency. Next one we have an object of mass 45 grams moving in a horizontal circle. We have the time period and the diameter. What is the value of the resultant centripetal force? 
Okay, well, the resultant force is equal to mv squared divided by r. We have quite a lot of variation in the units, so the SI base unit for the mass is the kilogram, so we're gonna have to convert the 45 grams to kilograms, which is gonna give me 45 times 10 to the power of minus three kg. Most common mistake in physics is just to forget to carry on a square, so I'm gonna be quite careful once we're doing this. And I'm going to calculate the linear speed by distance over time, which which is just the circumference of a circle, which is gonna be two pi times the radius. We're given the diameter, so I'm gonna halve that and convert it to meters. I'm gonna say 0.11, this is just two pi r, divided by the time period, which is 33 milliseconds, so 33 times 10 to the power of minus three. Then I'm going to divide this by the radius, which once again was 0.11. And if we do that correctly, we're going to get right about 179, which up to two significant figures is 180 newtons. Question eight, what is the relationship between the centripetal force F and the radius R? Well, lots of people will incorrectly write that F is equal to mv squared divided by R, and just say that F is inversely proportional to the radius. Yes. But remember, V also depends on R. And since V is equal to omega R, we can substitute that into this equation to get M omega R squared divided by R, which is just equal to M omega squared times R. So the force is directly proportional to the radius of rotation. Our correct answer is A. Next one, a conical pendulum with a mass of 100 grams moves in a horizontal circle of radius 10 centimeters. The pendulum is angled at 12 degrees to the vertical find the speed of rotation. We can visualize this conical pendulum with this cable. We can see that it's moving in a horizontal circle and it's the tension that is keeping it doing so. We're gonna have the tension which is gonna be acting upwards and the tension can be resolved into two components. We're going to have a horizontal component towards the center of the circle and this one here will be T sine of theta. The vertical component is gonna be T cos of theta. The tension is not the only force that acts on it though, we also have the weight which is acting straight downwards. If the pendulum is moving in a purely horizontal circle, then we know that T cos of theta will be equal to mg. And because it's moving in a circle, then we know that the remaining horizontal component will be providing the centripetal force. So we can say that T sine theta is equal to the net centripetal force, which is mv squared divided by r. Now let's do a little bit of mathematical trickery. So I'm going to take the first equation, I'm going to rearrange for T. So I'm going to say that T is equal to mg, divide that by cos of theta. Then I'm going to plug this into this equation. And rather than t, I'm going to write mg over cos theta times sine of theta is equal to mv squared over r. And look at this, the mass cancels out, so the speed will be independent of the mass. We're going to have g sine over cos. Well, this here is just tan theta, which is equal to v squared over r. Let's rearrange for v squared. So what we're gonna get is that v squared will be equal to g r tan theta. We know what g is, we know what the radius is, we're given the angle as well. So we're in business and we can calculate the speed. Okay, the speed will be given by the square root of 9.81 times 10 centimeters, which is just 0.1 meters, multiplied by the tangent of 12 degrees. And if we put this into a calculator, we're gonna find about 0.46 meters per second, up to two significant figures. Question 10, an object of mass five kilograms moves in a vertical circle of radius four meters. What is the tension at the bottom 
of the cable. Well, what forces are acting on this? We know that the weight mg is going to be acting straight down and we also have the tension which is going to be acting upwards. What is the resultant force in this case? Well, F net will just be equal to the sum of all forces because these are going in opposite directions. I'm going to say T take away mg. But remember, anytime something is moving in a circle, the net resultant force is known as the centripetal force. So this here will be equal to the mass times the acceleration, which in this case is centripetal acceleration, which is v squared over r, which is equal to t minus mg. And this means that the tension will just be mv squared over r plus mg. So the tension has to both balance the weight but also keep this thing moving in a circle. That's why it's going to be greatest at the bottom. Okay, let's put in some numbers here. So T will just be equal to five times the speed is 10 squared. Divide that by the radius, which is just four, plus the mass, which is five times 9.81. Putting these into a calculator, we're going to get 174 newtons or about 170 newtons up to two significant figures. These questions were a lot of fun, but in order to be prepared for everything, you need to have a look at the hardest possible questions in circular motion. And this is precisely why you should check out this video next. Enjoy.